Hello, everyone, and this is Sabia Katoon. Um, thank you for joining me, and it's yours truly. I hope you have got your hot or your cold drink ready with you to share with us isolation and your experiences. Yes, we are live now on Vodcast. I just want to thank our guests who um, gave some valuable contributions on our last show and just um, want to thank them for creating some positivity at this sensitive time. Today, you must call us on 0208 one two three four five zero seven and share with us your experiences we will be talking about adapting to new daily routines the strategies historical insightful and creative perspectives we have some interesting guests today joining us later but first please could you please give a warm welcome back to my co-host Josh Udin, our Think Success Life Coach. Josh. Thank you, Sabia. It is absolutely a great pleasure being with you all today. And like you, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us last week and for making positive comments regarding our broadcast last week. Thank you all. Brilliant. Okay, so we have our very first guest who, have, uh, who has joined us. Uh, her name is Emily and she is a presenter, an actress, and she will be sharing us her experience as a mom of a young child and uh, basically how differently um, it is, you know, uh, for her at this time, working from home, maybe, um, you know, even doing some homeschooling. So, um, Emily, please, uh, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Thanks for inviting me on. Brilliant. You're welcome. Okay, so Josh, um, what would you like to ask Emily? I think I'll, I'll let you um, ask our Emily, you know, what it is that you would like to find out from her. So Emily, in light of COVID-19 and the isolation that all of our experience, as a mother, as a wife, how are you able to manage this situation and what are your strategies? Would you like to share that with the group? Yes. So, um, oh, okay. Well, I'm someone, um, as a mum and as someone, a freelancer, I've always loved being out and about and just being able to nip up to an audition, to take my little girl here, there, go to the shops when I want. So the idea of staying at home when it first was announced, I was like, how am I going to do this mentally? How am I going to cope with this? Mm. Somebody that is always on the go out and about. And what I decided from early on, I've never been a person of routine at all, but I decided I needed to have a routine if I was going to get through this. Not, yeah. a, right. not a strict routine, just something that I could go by every day and um, that would give us a bit of structure. And that has honestly been the saving grace for me, just really? putting a bit of structure to our days. Yeah. So, so what does that structure look like for you? So on a Monday to Friday, I've got a little girl who's five. So she started in reception in September. Oh, okay. So on a Monday to Friday, we, we get up. We, we, don't, we, we don't sort of follow a school day or anything like that. We sort of get up when we get up. We have breakfast. Mm. And then I might do a little bit of like phonics with her, some sort of home learning, learning letters, sounds. And I try and make it as fun as I can. Um, she's quite an I have seen that on your random ramblings could yeah. you tell us about that <laughs> yes so in light of the isolation and obviously lockdown I did set up a group on Facebook called random ramblings and it was literally just for some of my close friends family my extended friends to kind of just come and have a little chat um, so it wouldn't just be me chatting it would be other people coming on board having a chat just talking about how we're feeling if someone's Brilliant. specific they want to say if you want to share homeschooling tips or tips to survive a day. Um, and it was just really about bringing people together at the end of each day. Mm. Yeah, what, brilliant. What, what, what would you say one thing that um, you could enlighten your audience with in terms of managing in a positive way? What would you share with the audience? Um, so 
I, I, one of the things that I think keeps me positive each day is we do go for a, a long walk. We've got a dog, so we only walk near where we are. We don't get in the car or anything, but yeah. going for a long walk really helps. Um, I would say just kind of sitting at some point in the day and listening to some music, an audio book, just having a little bit of time out, even if it's just 20 minutes. Mm. And then I would say the other thing is something I quite like to do is a bit of craft. And I okay. try to involve my little girl, but nine times out of ten, she wanders off and gets bored. Yes. You, and you've done a lot of arts and crafts, uh, haven't you? Is there something that you can share with um, our viewers as well that, you know, I mean, there are a lot of um, uh, families, mothers out there with young children and, you know, there could be um, some activities which you do. I know you've got some interesting things you've been doing. Yeah. Um, could share that with us? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's just, do you know what? It's also, I think, literally thinking outside the box. So um, using things. I've, I've, I've never been someone to grow anything. Everything everything kind of plant, I, any plant I've ever owned has always died, right? However, <laughs> oh, the, dear. on the first day of lockdown, I planted some sunflower seeds and I've taken them from a small seed to a sprig now that I've transferred. Wow into a, a pot and these are going to be our flowers of hope because mm -hmm. we planted them at the start of lockdown and we're going to see how far they grow brilliant, brilliant. listen can, can we just say emily we just got some people on the line who want to call us and share their experience so can we go to the caller please can you put him through us hello sorry uh, i can't hear quite clearly can you anyone hear uh, the line is a bit uh, faded. Can you say that again, please, your name? Okay. Can we just... Okay. Okay, can you hear... Can you hear... Can you hear them, Josh? Can you hear that? Hello? No. Can you hear them, Josh? The lines are okay. very clear. Okay, okay, we can't hear. Let's go to the. Okay, sorry. Emily, can you just? Okay. Sorry, we, we just interrupted because we had a, a caller live online phony, but obviously there was some technical difficulties. We'll go back to the next one. Sorry, you're sharing in terms of with your daughter. The, yeah. uh, just planting things we've been planting we've been trying to bake things we've been just sort of doing i guess what everyone's doing just trying to fill the days with yeah. activities <laughs> yes it's it is very challenging at, the, at this time so in terms of you as a professionally as an artist as a presenter how are you finding this in terms of your professional um, it's hard. I mean, the only the only saving grace about a year and a half ago, I, I built a little green screen studio in my garage. So okay. I, I, I get a few little videos. Oh. OK, we got another call coming live. Let's take this on. Uh, hello. 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 Hi. Can you hear? Can we hear them? Hello. Hi. Hello. Can you, can, can, can you put on your video? Hello there. You're you're on live broadcast. Can you put on your video? Press the section where it says video live, then you can come on screen. Can't go on screen because I can't. No, I'm not no, able to oh, do so that. If you, go, if, if you press no, video it's, live. It's, no, 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 Josh, it's okay. It's it's a call. So um, who am I talking to? Can you put your video that. off so that you. Sorry, go. Hello, caller. Hello. I think Tula. Tula Charlie. Oh, hello. Is this Tula? Yeah. Oh, hello, Tula. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, can you hear me clearly? I can do. It's a bit, it's a bit fuzzy, so I just about can hear you. Okay. Yes. Thank you for uh, you joining me? us. Um, yes. Um, so, um, what is it um, that you can share with us today? Um, bearing in mind, we would like to explore uh, um, isolation and your experiences. If you can tell us from your perspective, um, you know how how are you finding it? Um, I, 
Well, I guess it's very challenging. As um, obviously your guest is saying, it's like me too. I've got children and, and work, um, work, and you know, home balance is kind of like has been uh, you know disrupted a little bit because of this sudden COVID nineteen thing. But yes. I guess um, it, it's just. I mean, for me, it's it's just been about the last couple of weeks. It's just been about balancing really. And being able to That's kind of like balance children and yeah. work and just getting to that kind of structure point and getting them comfortable in, you know, in like on this new thing about homeschooling, which is kind of can be difficult too because it's settling in them, you know, at home um, where normally they would have been, you know, wake up in the morning, go to school and being settled at school. So it's a total different environment at home. So I just yeah. think, you know, I'd like to just share that it's not easy and, you know, for us to really have patience uh, as we're doing this because yeah. um, it's not yeah. something that, um, that we planned. It's just happened suddenly. Yeah. And it, it will get easier as as it goes along, we could, and we don't yeah. know how long this is going to be yeah. for. If, if I so can ask I would just too, really how say, old are your children? Um, I, my oldest son is twenty three. Um, okay. My second son is sixteen. I have uh, eight years old and I have a six years old. Yeah. So they're all different age ranges. So uh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. And, um, and you know, we hope that, um, you know, our viewers will be able to take on some um, tips and ideas and suggestions. Um, and thank you for calling, Tula. Have a lovely, lovely day. Okay, thank you for having okay. me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Tula. Thank, thank you for you, calling in. Care. And just again, if you want to call us, please call us on 0208-1234-507. Please call us because we'd love to hear you your views and your thoughts. That's 0208-123457. Call us and share your experiences. Um, Emily, so um, you were telling us about some activities. Um, I, I also would like to say that um, I remember seeing on your random ramblings um, some uh, hedgehog type plants that um, you uh, did an activity with. <laughs> and they needed yeah. haircuts, you know, and that's amazing because that's like a motivation for the young kids um, yeah. as well. Yes, that's what did they that's have fun what, doing that. They, um, my little girl loved it. Yes, she did. Um, it's the thing is, it's keeping their attention. I mean, she's only five, so we sort of don't we get a little window of concentration and then it's gone. So we just kind of do things in quick spurts. Yeah. And then we'll move on to the next thing. But the thing with the planting seeds and grass and all sorts, it's lovely being able to watch it grow because when it does grow, they then have that sense of achievement. Yeah. Brilliant. So, Sab Sabia, I believe we've got another guest waiting to come on. So in the meantime, yeah. Emily, thank you for joining us. It was absolutely a pleasure. And thank, thank you for you. sharing us with all your positive skills thank and you. knowledge. Thank you. Thank you Thanks very so much, Emily. Right. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. So we have now Carbon Malone online. Carbon, are you there? Okay, so um, we will have Car uh, Carvan, um, Carbon shortly, yes, uh, joining us, Josh. Um, as a life coach, Josh, um, could you tell us something about, um, you know, how, how some of the strategies you're dealing with? Well, thank you for asking me that, Sabia. I can only share some of the th things that I've been doing with myself and my family. Well, one of the daily routine I do is every morning I do a meditation for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. and, and that meditation helps me to focus on the whole day. It gets me balanced. Yeah. And then, and then after that, in, in, in the afternoon, I also do some exercise for about 30 to 20 minutes. It could be just going for a walk or just, you know, playing some activities with my daughter, playing badminton. I'm quite fortunate. Sure. I have a mm -hmm. garden or I can, I, there's a local park near me. Yeah, we take we take these things for granted, don't we? Yeah. Um, on that note, Josh, I think our guest is here. Um, right. so, and if you'd like to um, introduce our next well, guest. So this is Carvin. Uh, he is a final year student studying professional dance and musical oh. theatre. He also works part-time in the theatre and recently appeared in the Adams Family, the musical at the Bernie Grant Arts Theatre. Hi, Kevin. Thank you for joining us today. Can I start by asking you, how are you managing to deal with COVID-19 situation 
as a final year student? Student managing. Um, it's a, it's been a, it has been quite difficult. Um, the first half of lockdown, I had to spend uh, moving back home with uh, my mum and my family. And having had three years of my independence and finding myself and um, getting hold of that, then having to move back home, it was difficult at first. Like arguments, <laughs> let's, won't say that they didn't happen. Um, and yeah, that adjusting took took some time. Um, and I feel like a lot of students will be in the same situation, especially third year. So I'm third year. I've um, got my graduation coming up. I had another show coming up. Um, that had all been that's all been cancelled so it does in a way feel like um three years of, of a build-up as sort of some of it's been snatched away a little bit um but you know we move we grow I've just I personally I've just focused on planning after this and um, looking at what comes after for me career-wise so contacting agents um um doing those sort of things so that when we can get back to work we're ready to hit the ground running so can I just sounds like a, a very sensible thing there that you're doing uh, there, Kevin. And, um, you know, um, you know, how has it impacted on you? Um, so how has COVID impacted? Yes, this whole situation. Yeah. So, um, you know, going home, moving, moving back home, living with my living with my family again, which is something I haven't done in in three years. Um, uh, I've. I've actually had to come back to London um, sort of halfway through because of the family, uh, a family situation um, yeah. at home. Um, but yeah, at first, the whole thing was just a bit shocking, so, wasn't it? Like, I just all went in for work and then I was um, sent home um, without uh, my shift going ahead. Uh, on the Sunday before college, I'd, I'd had an email saying that... Um, college wasn't going to be on for the foreseeable future and it felt like it all for me happened very suddenly and very quickly which um I guess for a lot of people it can be really um can cause a lot of anxiety like a lot of people aren't sure able to adjust to that change like that so in terms of managing that I I, I just remember you saying earlier that you went for you're working part-time and you went for a job and they told you to go home so what's that situation be like for you in terms of finance and managing that um so my the company that i work for um i'm i'm very lucky my payment and my payment plan is all set in place um uh so i've i've been really lucky but my main worries finance wise have actually been what comes after this especially yeah. within especially within the theater industry because um you know theater it's like a business they have their yeah. rolling money they have yeah. their money that invests and then they yeah. receive and invest yeah. and receive and all of a sudden, you've got um, so many little theatre groups and theatre companies that provide so many of us jobs and give us a lot, a lot of us work. Mm. Those companies now are not earning any money, so they don't have any money to put forward into the future. So right. that means huge losses on um, uh, small local theatres and that sort of thing. Um, I think the theatre industry is something that has really been hit hard. Yeah. Um, with COVID nineteen, yeah. especially you know, it's what I study, it's where I work, yeah. um, and coming back from it financially, financially, um, I think will be really tricky. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's so, a good community, you know. So can I just ask you something else? Then I, you know, I can see what you're saying. It's been challenging and difficult for you in terms of moving back home, the job wise. So because you sound like you're very active, you've got a lot happening at the time, you know, you're studying, you're working, you've got a social network, you've got friends, you're going out. So as a young man, yeah, what, what do you do to stay positive and what, how do you manage your day? Um, so I've actually, I've, I've had to limit how much news I watch and how much <laughs> okay. media I take in because it just feels relentless, doesn't it? And the best way I've been doing it is reading. Because reading it just completely takes you away into another place, doesn't it? Like, okay. you, if you're enjoying a book, you know, you can invest. But also socially, um, Skype, Zoom, those apps have just been mm. a godsend for all of us. Like, a few yeah. of my friends, I've got, so, I've got many, like, different social groups. And we've each, um, say, gone into a Zoom chat with uh, a quiz round each. And we all oh. just do a quiz, have a drink. Um, and I've connected with people that I hadn't... Um, spoken to for a long time so 
from really? when I um, lived back in my hometown. We connected yeah. with a Zoom, Zoom so, chat. So, and, yeah, it was really nice. So yeah. you, where, where are you originally from, uh, Kevin? You're not from London, are you? No, I'm from Lincoln. Oh, okay. Lincoln so what's the, what's the, like, the difference between Lincoln and London at the moment? What do you see the difference? Um, uh, so Lincoln hasn't been, so far, hasn't been hit by COVID as, as hard. Um, mm. So I think at first, in Lincoln, it all seemed a little bit um, a bit odd, a bit alien with what was going on. <laughs> okay. Whereas having been in London, where um, it was getting it was getting hit a bit harder, you know, it seems like less of a um, all of a sudden impact in London. Whereas Lincoln feels like, oh, this has happened really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah. So, yeah, but yeah. All, so can I ask you something else, uh, Kevin? You said you were back at home in London. You're sh- are you sharing flats or some other house? No, well, um, it's part of the reason why I've had to come back because my um, I'm com- I'm completely by myself now. Okay. Um, yeah, and one thing that I have like with many people that I've spoken to, the one thing I I feel and um, I've got my way through this is not for positive attitude upon myself all the time right i feel like social media has been a constant be productive be positive and i don't spend every day of my life usually (laughs) you know sometimes sometimes i I do want to sit and i want to watch some trash tv and that's how i help myself you know i don't feel like people need to um find a a new journey within this time i i think it should be more personal, like take, do what you need to do, not what social yeah. media is yeah. telling you, did you do. Yeah, did you say um, that you were living in shared housing? Um, what's, it, what's it like um, in, in, in this uh, isolation, um, um, living in shared housing? Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm in a flat, I'm in a um, shared flat. It's, independent, it's privately rented. Um, right. I've only been doing it a few days and because I I spent time in a small bungalow with my family I'm loving my own space I'm really like I am liking my, <laughs> my personal space um but I have found myself having to um actually you like use the daily exercise more yeah. find myself actually um doing something like putting sure. my mind to something sure so um just to wrap things up now um what is your plan for the future i know you're uh planning a lot of things uh, what's your ultimate plan for the future that uh, you see um yeah so once i graduate um i've uh been contacting my agents and things so i hope to sign with an agent get auditioning um start what um actors call fun employment where you you'll have a job like to pay your way but it won't necessarily be a performing job yes um, uh, so just that, just pay my way, yeah. develop my career, that sort well, of thing. But okay. Kevin, with it, as an artist, performer and dancer, I'm sure you're going to have a lot, lot of opportunities now. With There's going to be lots of uh, ideas to share, a lot of opportunity to uh, create new productive, you know, theatre workshops. Yeah, lots, of play, lots of plays about COVID-19. Yeah, um, and I, yeah. I think you, you've been in high demand, you know, as an artist, so... There will be opportunities. Yeah. Well, good luck with all of that. Um, you know, you, you sound like you've got a lot of, um, you know, great, great ideas and the planning that you're doing, you know, um, it's just uh, great. And I think I think um, it's, this, this isolation has given you that space and time probably to put your thinking cap on and, you know, have, have that quality time to think better. Um, and, and that's probably what the, you know, best thing that has come out of this for you. Um, definitely, you know, definitely. I think that's a really good way. That's a really good way of putting it. I feel like the, um, I've tried to take the idea of productivity and create quality rather than quantity. Okay. Which I think is something that social media is um, pushing. And like, would you be, be baking that banana bread if you didn't have an Instagram to post? <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 so oh, hold on, Kevin. So, are you saying that there's too much information on the internet? There's too much pressure on people to behave certain ways, to react but certain, Josh, certain isn't, ways. isn't it how you use that? There may be whatever out there, but it, it, at the end of the day, it's how mm. you use that information, how you um, 
you know, share that information? Would it yeah, not but, depend but, on those things? Yeah, but, but sometimes, uh, Sabi, there's, you know, people might feel pressured. They have to be a certain way or behave a certain way or react a certain way to, you know. What, uh, what because... do you think? What do you think, Kevin? Yeah, I think, um, just, I think it's calmed down a little bit, but especially in the first two weeks, it did yeah. just seem that it was a be positive, be productive. And actually, we a lot of the time with um, speak of mental health, we're told not yeah. to suppress negative yeah. thoughts or negative yeah. emotions. So how yeah. come it feels like that's being brought back? First where we have yeah. to be positive, be positive. And yes. you know what? Sometimes we can just be annoyed at this situation. That's yeah. okay. It's okay yeah. for us not to be um, fully happy with what is going on right now. And, yeah. and that's the way that some that that's the way that I um, mentally work sometimes. That I have to get, I have to have a strop to be able yeah. to see the light. <laughs> <side of things. laughs> okay. you know what? You're right. And sometimes you can just cry and say, Do you know what? I'm going to cry. I'm going to be upset. It's okay. I, I you know, you're doing your own comfort space. As that's long as okay. you listen, the, the most important thing. Follow your own instinct. Follow your own thought process. Follow you. Follow. Listen to yourself. Whatever you're telling yourself, and if you feel happy and comfortable, then do that. Don't allow other people to interpret how you should feel or how you should behave. But on that note, Kevin, I would just like to say thank you very much for joining us. It's been absolutely great pleasure having you on and Definitely. for you to share with us. Yeah, and so yeah, thank you, Kevin. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you Bye. for that. Um, we, as we wait for our next guest, um, our next mystery guest, um, he will join us shortly. Um, he is an author. I'll just give you a little hint about what he does. He's a writer. Um, he has written a um, couple of novels. Um, uh, one's called The Pacific Sword, a dystopian novel and Unshackled, a motivational poetry compilation. He is Saifuddin, um, and he is not only an author, as I mentioned, but also a history teacher by profession. I think um, we have Saifuddin joining us. Um, welcome, uh, Saif, uh, to our vodcast show. Yes, Hi. welcome, Saif. Can you hear us, Saif? I yeah, can hear you yeah you're, yep. you're with us. Brilliant. Okay. Yes. Welcome to the show. So, um, as I was saying, um, say, could you, uh, Josh, we've got a caller. Yep. Hold on. Take it. Hello. Hello, caller. Hello. Hi. Hi, Josh. It's me now. Hi, caller. It's me now. Hello, caller. I didn't catch your name. Sorry. Uh, say that again. Josh, can you hear? Yep. Go on, caller. What's your name? My name is Naz Khan. Uh, I'm just saying hello to you and Sabia. Can you hear oh, me? Hello, Naz. Yeah. Hello, Naz. Thank you for phoning us. What would you like to talk to us, Naz, about? Uh, I, I was just watching your uh, online broadcast um, and enjoying it thoroughly, really. And then can relate to all of your guests, whatever they're saying, especially Emily's one, because I've got two little ones as well. Oh, okay. Wow. How, old are they? Can, How old are they? I can relate uh, to some of the things that jo uh, uh, Kevin was saying as well because uh, I'm a very creative person at the same time. So, wow. really enjoying yes. it. I just wanted to share my feelings. Like, I'm really following your uh, online podcast and uh, podcast and really enjoying Great. your time. Oh, do, you know, do you know, Naz, we really appreciate your calling uh, uh, us. And listen, if you want to join us, please call us on 0208 507 Please phone us so you can share us with your thoughts and your ideas. But Naz, can I just ask you, so as as you just phoned in, can you tell us a bit about how you are dealing with COVID-19 with and as a family or individual? Um, I would like to share um, only the positive bit because there, is, there are lots of uh, negativity that's out what there. We that's what like we to, want, like Naz. That's what we want, positivity. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's why that's why I was really enjoying your uh, podcast because that's how you were turning the whole thing in into a positive uh, uh, outline to the people uh, like normal people. So, in the in terms of, of what you were asking, Josh, I'd like to share. It's like I found it found it really difficult at uh, the transition period of you know like all of a sudden from office to coming back to home, like working from home 
I'm doing the homeschooling for my 11 years old and the three years old as well. But eventually, um, uh, like I found it quite comfortable uh, positively because we are safe at home. So I felt like I was really grateful that both my partner and I can, uh, I, I have the ability to work from home really and mm. uh, be being safe. Because lots mm. of people out there, uh, they don't have this uh, shelter and then they're not privileged. They're still going out um, yeah. uh, to do their um, their uh, like uh, sort of jobs they're doing. So in terms of that, I'm really grateful. And yes. In, yes. in terms of looking after kids, I uh, like first couple of weeks, uh, I, we were too serious about following the homeschooling, like whatever the teacher asking us to do and things, and parallelly doing our um, uh, office work. Uh, but I think eventually we became quite stressed because uh, it was quite stressful. It's a new routine for us, you see, yes. because yes. Yes. we are not yes. quite but used to being You're, you're doing great, it sounds like. You're doing great. Um, you know, I mean, it can be a challenge, you know, for a mum who, you know, who has uh, someone as young as, um, you know, your daughter. Um, I mean, I would not have a clue how to deal with it. I, I know my two are much older, you know, a, a 22-year-old and a 15-year-old. Um, I mean, this is a very new thing for us, this lockdown, and it's worldwide. And for us to know how to be, how to deal with everyday life, it's it's a shocking thing to our system, first of all. Mm. Um, and uh, people like you, Naz, you know, um, I admire, I admire because it's a challenge in itself. Um, and But thank you for sharing with us. Yes. Um, some, some of those positive things um, yeah. and I and I and I actually hope as well um, that you know there are viewers out there and, and callers do call in um, and share uh, and if, even if it means that one of your small um, uh, comment um, that you give may uplift someone's uh, moment for that day you know we don't know you know um, we're all dealing with it differently and yeah. can only share some of the good things. Thank you. Yeah. On that note, thank, thank you, you Nas, thank and we really appreciate it. And keep listening to us and be safe with your family and look after yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Nas. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So, thank okay. you. Thank okay. you. So, so um, without much ado, if we can get back to our guest, Safe. Sorry about that, Safe. Um, um, yes. So, um, what we would like from you, Safe, is if you can start off by telling us what is your perspective of this lockdown and your life during this uh, sensitive moment, if you could share with us. Yeah. Um, see, I come from a, a background of history. So I graduated in history. I teach history uh, at school at the moment. And one thing that I have really begun to appreciate and understand a lot more, uh, it's a bit different for, for teachers because we have holidays. We get six weeks off here and there. We have a lot of time on our hands in between the year. Whereas a lot of workers right now, a lot of people that are usually busy are now having the opportunity of time more so than ever before. In fact, mm -hmm. I also kind of understood it in this way, which is I don't think some people will ever get this time, like this allotment of time ever in their life after this lockdown. So imagine yeah. the lockdown is over and they didn't pursue something creative or they didn't pursue wow. something or for skill yeah. or some sort of learning. They will never, ever, ever in their lifetime. I hope they won't because it would mean you'd have to go for a war and have sort of tragedy for it to be yeah, a but, lockdown. But, but say, but say yes. hold on, but for some people, mm. this time might be really depressing and ang anxiety and not being able to cope with it. So this experience could be really challenging for them. What would you say to that? Yeah. That is the obvious uh, point because this lockdown was caused by something very, very tragic, mm. which is the underlying kind of heavy umbrella uh, kind of um, structure that's in place. Mm. Bearing that in mind, the only thing that we can do from that is to look at, just like the two previous speakers uh, and guests have pointed out, the positives in that. And my perspective is more than just the idea of okay we're going to do th I mean we are going to have to do things productively but if we think about this as not just a, a depressing kind of 
a term of a uh, time of turmoil, but also a time Definitely. where we have so much opportunity and it's such an opportunity to have the time now instead of sitting and hey, regardless of what you do, you're going to be in this lockdown. You're going to be sitting there with only one thing, yeah. whether you're rich or you're poor, you have time. That's the yes. one thing that's guaranteed for every person in lockdown. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, definitely. But listen, I, but what about mm. what about people who say, you know, there might be people who say, do you know what? I've spent a lot of time here with my family. I don't really like them. I don't really <laughs> enjoy their company. They're really what's stressing what's me out. Yeah. What's I happening have, in I your have, household, Josh? You know? Oh, you're not meant to tell everyone that's about my household. <laughs> but say, you know, yeah. there might be people who are might thinking, do you know what? This is really, you know, uh, hard because although I love my family, I just need some space. Or they might have not, they might not have a house to live in. They might live in a small accommodation. Yeah. So yeah. in terms of people like that, I mean, we have to think of how can this time be constructed for them in a way yes. that. Yeah. Uh, what yes, would you so, say to that? What would you say? So now that we've understood the structure of it, we've now un- got the fact that okay, yes, time is the medium that we're playing with, and well, it can be stressful, as you pointed out. Josh mm. and it can be a time of it can lead to arguments within the family it can lead to yeah. uh, just general sadness within the time that you have yeah. now this comes on to well, well I don't know about you but when, I, but when I speak to my grandma she repeats the thing over and over again <laughs> she's like when am I going out I can say no you can't go out she's right. every Josh, day asking Josh, that is where you have to practice your patience yes we do but it's, okay. it's hard it's hard <laughs> got the same person repeat anyway sorry you were saying i just wanted to so what you what you have to do at this point is apply different methods to it so one thing that would be usually quite weird uh if you weren't in lockdown and i said to you okay josh the the method to this is you have to actually isolate yourselves from your from your family you have to be in your own room be yeah. separate from your family. If I said yeah. that outside of lockdown, it would sound antisocial. It sound mm. not as productive. Yeah. However, in lockdown, it's actually not a bad idea. It's, mm. Mm. it's normal, isn't it? This is the to normality now. To be separated now. will help you mentally during the lockdown. Um, and of course, you have the time to be bonding with your family and to do all the opposite kind of things. But to kind of of avoid certain situations yeah i would actually suggest maybe do isolate yourself have a certain room it can be tricky of course because if you're sharing a house and you don't have enough rooms i'm kind mm-hmm. of again fortunate in the fact that i've got this set up here i've got a spare room where i can create this it doesn't really take up much of the room it's yeah. it's just a corner of the room but yeah. it allows me to be creative it allows me to go on and do things like this podcast and many of yeah, but, but but having said that you know we got to think about you know if you're living in a in a small uh, uh, flat one or two bedroom yeah. flat you've got two three kids Kids, you've got love you know you haven't got a balcony mm-hmm. that puts a lot of you know pressure on as an individual and as a family although you know you're allowed to go out for one hour and exercise you know it's about how do you keep on maintaining that positive and spending that quality time for me as a life coach it's mm-hmm. about as a family and individual you're accepting it and you acknowledge it and say look this is where we are this is the situation now we can either like it or we can just say heck mm-hmm. with this you know, we all we always had a conscious choice in yeah. and whatever we do. And Josh, I, I mean, yeah, if I can say something to that, um, I would never in this whole wide world be able to imagine those who are isolated in like a room. You know, um, they are to me the most vulnerable. Whether yeah. you know, it, it's a, a a big family living in a crowded council property, whether it's a, an elderly person you know, uh, or, or a single, um, you know, uh, mum or single, yeah, with, with children. And they're just stuck in that room, you know, or in very crowded, you know, situation. How do we, you know, give them hope? You know, what can we suggest, you know, for them, you know, without feeling the disparity? You know, how, how do we give them a bit of uplifting? You know, and maybe as a life coach, you can... Uh, say something on that and then um, if Saif could um, also give your thoughts on that as well. Sure. Well I, I mean for for me as a life coach what I will share with everyone is this is to say look it is difficult you know it's about becoming you know being a self-aware saying yes we are in this situation but then trying to move forward and saying look what can we do to make our life more manageable and more constructive, you know? And sometimes we forget to be grateful. We should be grateful for what we have. Sometimes we're not, we don't realize that, you know, to be alive is a beautiful thing. 
to be able to be in a society where we have access to food, water, mm. family, friends, information technology. Not everyone's lucky like that in this world. So every day be grateful that we are in a situation where we are alive, we got family, we got friends, you know, we can make and we can use uh, rituals in terms of like daily routine, you know, making, trying to make everything normalized in terms of how we manage the situation, you know, getting up in the morning, having a shower, doing your exercise, having mm. breakfast and mm. trying to do something, you know, in a, in a constructive way. That's what I would say, you know, be positive. Yeah. Mind. Don't allow yourself to get down. It's hard. I know it's hard. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. what would yeah. you say? Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, Clive, if you can um, say something on that. Yeah, I mean, the perspective that I have is with a situation and a sensitive situation that we're in right now, there's a macro and a, and a micro. Uh, Josh touches quite well on a lot of the macro uh, topics, which is stuff like acceptance. And uh, instead of kind of fighting against something that we can't actually control, you know, understanding that properly. And then, uh, Sabia, you asked about the micro, which is, you know, a situation where, you know, what can you actually do within that time? And if you merge them two together, once you have the acceptance and once you've understood this is the situation, these are the terms that we're living with right now, then using the micro, which is also very important, step by step, okay, in my um, in my entire day, five things that are going to occupy my time. One, is it the spirituality side of things? Is it the the, mm. the kind of focus on God if you if you believe in God? Is it yes. that, that kind yes. of aspect? Yes. Is it now then the, the, the learning side of it, the skill side of it? Am I going to go and learn something new, learn a bit of another language or mm. learn a bit of history? And then the other side of it is the, the expression side of it am I going to write something am I going to play some games am I going to uh, use my time in fun ways where you know it gets me to express myself so there's many different aspects there's even the aspect of food as well how am I going to nourish my body what kind yeah. of food am I going to be eating mm -hmm. during this time mm -hmm. and Very then the, the other aspect is the physical aspect am I going to go outside and skip I bought a skipping rope just so I can skip in the garden you know there's yeah. so many different elements these are the micros once you've understood mm. the bigger macro and then you apply the micro uh, aspect of it, then together but, but, you can have some... Uh, but if I can there. just stop you there, say, mm. uh, I believe the micro, from my understanding, mm. are those, they're those baby steps we need to take now. Mm. The One micro is part. everything that you you are doing. The micro yeah. is the lack of doing something as well. If you're in yeah. bed and you just don't do anything, that's the micro of not doing anything there as well. Um, and it can start off as a baby step for the productive micro side of things. If you want to yeah. start doing something, it might be baby steps for, for me. For me right now, I'm trying to learn French at home with <laughs> one app. That's good. Okay. And I'm oh, taking these sure. micro steps. <laughs> Why French? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bonjour. <laughs> oh, bonjour. <laughs> yeah, bonjour. It's, that means it's, hello, right? It's, and it's I think, I, and I think you're right, Sai. For what, what all of us have been saying, you know, throughout this discussion, is, yes. it's about taking the little steps. It's about being creative, using your imaginative, and also being comfortable doing what you feel makes you happy and 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 lead a normal life. It could yeah. be. Whatever makes you feel happy. Yeah. But on that Josh, note, um, uh, yeah. Josh, um, I know Saif um, has. I know I'm going to put Saif on the spot here. Um, he's he's got some motivational poetry compilation. I don't know if there's a small, short one you can share with us, maybe, Saif. Well. Um, if you give me a minute, I can get that for you. Okay. <laughs> That's great. I mean, the word motivation or just, um, you know, uh, is, is, is what we want right now, Josh. Isn't that right? Yeah. You definitely yeah. have put me on the spot, but I will try to satisfy that as much as possible. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, and, and, and coming, Why do you look coming from a history background as well, um, uh, I know um, Saif works in a school. Um, I think they're secondary school students yeah. as well. Um, you know, if you can just uh, briefly, like in a, in a minute or so, touch upon how you would uh, make it like an insightful or a creative, um, you know, uh, I give them some in, in insightful, creative ideas, you know, to, to keep going um, as they are doing their online work okay. uh, alongside. Um, I think with school 
right now in the situation that we're in right now obviously the 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 structure is everyone is continuing their lessons we're in easter holidays right now which kind of blends in very nicely for us but we have to kind of continue the structure a routine is the main thing the one kind of thing that yeah. was thrust on us as an importance as a teacher is not so much as okay are we going to learn in-depth skills on a certain topic in history but more so of can these kids stick to a routine and what I've seen and what I've experienced from a lot of these students is they have been they've been logging on to Google Classroom they've been following all the lessons as they as much as they can some obviously have been taking advantage of the situation we're in um, and others have actually understood the importance of continuing this routine because without this structure and routine yeah. we can we yeah. c- it can lead to a lot more stress it can lead to a, a stress for parents as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm. but yeah. listen, uh, yeah, as you. we are, uh, Sabia, uh, as we are coming to end of the show, mm. maybe we can invite uh, Safe next time to do us sure. a beautiful yeah. uh, poetry. Yes, in, in we the meantime, can do. Can in the meantime, do. thank uh, you. For, yeah, in the meantime, thank you for joining us, Safe. It's been absolutely uh, great having you on the show. Thank you and for you to yeah. share your wisdom and your experience and knowledge. So yeah. thank you thank again. Thank you for all of your valuable contributions. Um, and we hope that our viewers and our callers um, can take on board some of uh, some of those, um, you know, uh, amazing things that you have mentioned. Um, and we hope to uh, speak to you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so we're um, coming to an end shortly, um, Josh. Um, yep. Um, is if you can give us um, some of your final thoughts. Okay. Well, Sabia, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us today. Our guests, uh, Carvin, Emily, Saifuddin, yeah. and to all our viewers and listeners for phoning in and sharing their thoughts like Naz and others. I would also like to thank you, my dear friend and co-host, <laughs> Sabina Katum. <laughs> for making this podcast uh, uh, very fun and likewise. exciting. Likewise, Josh. But before we go, I'd like to leave you all with a final thought. Sometimes we are tested not to show our weakness, but to discover our strengths. Remember, keep safe, look after yourself, Look after your family and friends, and together we can get through this. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. I'll just like to leave with a few final things. Um, thank you, everyone who's been on the show, all our callers, our listeners again, and um, thank you for uh, loving vodcast like us comment share let us know what you would like to discuss as we bring you more and for now it's goodbye from me yours truly sabia katoon stay home stay safe safe lives bye everyone